Well, hello, everyone, and welcome to week six. Wow, we, how about that, Mike? Well, we made it so far. Imagine doing the Kingdom of God in six weeks. It's pretty good. You know, I guess it only took seven days to build everything, right? Or No, six days. <laughs> six days to build everything. Yeah. Build everything. So anyways, hey, here we go. We're going to be looking at everyday evangelism. And that's a word I really would like for us to kind of dissect a little bit mm -hmm. so they can discuss this in the group today. Uh, but, but I'm going to restart off with First Peter here. Mm -hmm. Uh, chapter 3, verses 14. He says, Have no fear of them, nor be mm -hmm. troubled, but in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, mm -hmm. always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect. Yeah. You don't find that much in our culture and world. Mm -hmm. Having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. So the mission of the church, ultimately, is to recognize that, obviously, that God and Jesus, I mean, Jesus is the true king, right? right. And, right. And, and, and the kingdom that he brings is the kingdom of hope. Correct. So this whole world, this evangelism word. Okay, well, let's just go back again to the, to the word itself. Euangelion means to simply deliver the good news. And the good news, again, going back to our friend J.I. Packer, you want God as your king, yes. you don't want the world to be your king. It's not a good offer. So the notion of euangelion or evangelism is basically to share the good news of what it is. And part of that good news, I mean, the good news is very deep and rich, but part of it certainly is to see God as true king. Mm -hmm. So that whole notion here of doing that, again, when you understand his kingdom, when you understand the community that exercises his authority uh -huh. of life and blessing and favor, then what you do is you begin to recognize that that evangelism is it's just really, it's everyday life. One of my favorite authors is Michael Green, who wrote a great study called Evangelism in the Early Church. Now, the early church in the first few centuries grew in tremendous pace. And his description of how they did it was they gossiped the gospel. Love that. They simply talked. I got, I, they gossiped, I got, the goss go gossiped the gospel. You gossiped the gospel because... <laughs> As you talk over the fence and you talk with people at coffee and things like that, if you really are living as an ambassador for Christ, then they're going to see just what Peter talks about here. They're going to see that you live with hope. And in this culture, alienation, despair, brokenness. I mean, you listen to the lyrics that, you know, a lot of musicians, it's not a very hopeful place. So when you live with hope, that creates kind of an attitude that people... They want to know why it is you live that way. You know, I I, I just think about uh, playing pickleball <laughs> or being up at the gym. Uh -huh. The influence that you have with the people around you, sometimes you just don't realize what it is. Mm -hmm. And then people eventually want to know, what what's what's different about you? Right. What is it that you have? And that's evangelism. Evangelism is being Christ to someone else, and you don't necessarily got to be there preaching. Oh, no. It's just being that example. So. Well, it includes that because... People use the word gospel, which is an old English God spell to reduce the gospel was a way of saying an old English, you know, euangelion. And so what happens is um, everyone's got a gospel. I mean, you can have the gospel of, you know, fitness. You can have the gospel of if I get the right country club or the right car. In other words, we often tell the story of the whole story of the Bible through creation and fall and redemption and consummation, in other words. So one of the ways to think of telling the gospel is if you think of creation as my identity, which is truly in the image of God, that's as it should be. The fall is there creates a problem. What's the problem? I've broken away from God. Redemption is Jesus comes and does what? He reconciles yes. and restores. Yeah. Yeah. And the consummation is my hope. Why? Well, I'm looking for his return because my life will go on with him in his kingdom forever. So when you look at that, if you see identity, problem, solution, and hope, that's really our story. And everyone has a story, story like that. Yeah, and right. in the notes, you'll see that there's lots of different ways to tell that story. And oftentimes, you, you know, when you hear people talk about who they are, we can discover quickly if it's all about bank yeah. accounts and portfolios <laughs> or yes, that's you right. know, is it family, you know, yeah, just what yeah, is it? Yeah. And if your problem is your health, then your solution is to get well. And yes. so... Everyone has a gospel. So ours, again, if you, again, think of it as that gossiping the gospel, listening carefully to what other people think their gospel is, and then you can 
kind of okay. present a simple defense, as Peter suggests. Yes, yeah, yes, <clears throat> yes. And I love, you know, one of the one of your study questions this week is, how would you tell the story of God and man? Mm -hmm. I mean, just what you were just talking about. How would you tell it, tell it to somebody? And really, it's really telling your story. Right. This is who I was before, and this is who I am now. That's all I. I mean, that's what I can tell you. And I, you know, all right. you can all you can share is the hope and, and <clears throat> of what you have. Right? Well, and that again goes back to being disciples. How do we learn? One of the major ways is experience. So when you experience the transforming power of Jesus, who we see as Lord and King and Savior then now you have a testimony to offer sure. because you've ex you haven't just thought about it. You have, but you've thought about it, you've experienced it, and now you're in a position to share it. And that's all everyday evangelism is about. Well, and we uh, enjoy your, your last week together. Uh, our hope is that uh, your group will continue after this, that you'll uh, decide to go down some other studies, some other discipleship program, mm -hmm. invite some more new friends, maybe get together once in a while, break some bread and, and so forth, just mm -hmm. to keep this relationship going and moving forward. So Mike, any last minute comment <clears throat> as we say <clears throat> goodbye? Well, I think what's interesting about the way the whole Bible is structured is that you see God opens with a garden, with the tree of life, and then the tree of life is lost. But then what do we find at Revelation 21 and 22? That the garden mm -hmm. is being replaced with a garden city Yes. So that when God tells his story, I mean, we're priestly kings from the beginning. He calls us to be priestly kings now. Yes. In Revelation, Jesus promises us that we will continue as priestly kings in his kingdom to come. So the story goes from the garden to the garden sure. city. And we need to see it as a whole big picture. Sure. And once we do that, and it's like, ah, it begins to come together. So lots of these little elements, now we see where they fit into the big picture puzzle. All right, well, God bless you. May the Holy Spirit continue to work powerfully in and through your group and through each and every one of you.